Are you a worst case scenario type of person? I definitely am. Okay. Yeah. It's a good way to be. <laughs> What's the worst case scenario for your screenwriting career here in Los Angeles, Jay? The worst case scenario would uh <laughs> would be that I've I've done all of this for nothing, that I never write anything um that gets made or that gets sold or that turns into something that people see. Uh, my goal is, is to become a professional screenwriter. That's what I would like to do. And as long as I can write and I'm able to uh, uh, um, make that you know my living, I can make a living as a screenwriter, that's, that's fine. But yeah, if I if if it just never happens for me, that's worst case scenario. I mean, I I can't think of anything worse than that. You know, I've I've read stories and 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 seen interviews with people who say that, you know, they've written and they've made money and and nothing's ever ever been made from what they've written. You know, it's like, "Oh, I've been commissioned to write this and you know, rewrite this and nothing was ever made. Made a lot of money, but nothing was ever made. In a situation like that, I feel that there's 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 always a way to get something made though. If 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 I'm able to make a living as a screenwriter, but say none of the projects that I've been working on, you know, the studio or the producer, they they decide that they don't want to make it. I think then I would just try to make something on my own. I'm still making a living as a screenwriter, <laughs> but at least then I would have, I think, the ability to then perhaps do something you know, on my own, even if it's a short film. You see what I'm saying? Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of myself. I'm, I'm earning money doing what I love to do, you know, as my passion, and that gives me then the freedom then to maybe explore over here, to do something else over here. I don't know if that makes sense, but. It does. Do you think the words, what if, and, it, and you, you stayed in Tennessee, nothing wrong with Tennessee, but, or, or somewhere else, maybe settled down in Miami, and never tried, would be worse? Oh, well, uh, I, sure. I, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. No, 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 no. Um, it's just like, okay, <laughs> if I'm thinking, you know, worst case scenario, I mean, worst case scenario is me pursuing uh, uh, screenwriting and never achieving that goal, never becoming a prof professional screenwriter. But me staying in Tennessee or New York or Miami, just never pursuing it at all, well, there is no worst case scenario in that scenario because I'm not chasing the dream. That's how I would look at it. Sure, but if you still had it inside you, but you just, ah, uh, the odds are oh, it no. won't happen. No. Right. Like, if, if it's inside me, then, then I'm going to go for it. Sure. You know, that's, 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 with, that's with any, any endeavor that I, that I have. Like, if... If it's in me to do something, believe me, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna chase it. I'm gonna. <laughs> what does the ninety-year-old Jay Fingers say in a conversation to the Jay Fingers sitting here now? And this ninety-year-old Jay Fingers never pursued screenwriting, never got out of his comfort zone, never risked being alone, maybe turning down. A great night at TGI Fridays. What's that conversation like? You know what? I, I, I think in that conversation, the 90-year-old Jay would probably be proud and say, at least you you tried. You know, you 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 know, you gave it a shot. Um you went out there and 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 you follow your dream. <laughs> Even though that dream perhaps cost you everything 
at least you tried. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think that 90 year old Jay would, uh, would be proud. Okay. All right. So if we, if we're traveling, um, ahead in time and, and he, he's like consoling the Jay that's here now, or not even consoling, but just giving him praise for, for going for it and keep going. And, um, you know, I like what you said. You said if if it meant you had to make something of your own, even if it was a short, that would be okay. And then just do, you know, polishes or rewrites for other people. Right. And that's a lot of people's careers, and I don't think that's a failure. But everybody has their own bar of what, you know. Right, right. What success is. So. Okay. I, I And, and the, just the reason why I mentioned that is because I feel like in those interviews that I've, I've read and seen where people say, you know, this is, this is, you know, yeah, I've had a great career, but you know, nothing was ever made. I, I don't know. I just don't get that. <laughs> I feel like the opportunity is there, you know, just like I said, like a short or, or, you know, something, you know, it may not be the big massive, you know, 4,000 screens, you know, premiere, but, but it is something. And then I feel like that's, that's why we get into this business is we want to create and tell stories, you know, especially in film, you know, you want people to see your work. So I feel, just feel like the opportunity is there to create something that can be seen. What is a chaotic neutral? <laughs> um, I, there's this matrix that has, I, I guess, you know, different personality uh, um, traits or whatever. And you've got like lawful good, you know, the lawful good person is the person that, you know, will follow, you know, the letter of the law and, you know, they, they're a good, nice, good person. And then you've got like, uh, I forget what the, the opposite is. It's evil, I guess, unlawful evil where you just, Whatever. So on this matrix, uh, I feel I fall in chaotic neutral, right? I'm not a goody two shoes, but I'm not an evil person <laughs> either. You know, I'm just, I'm me. I fall in the middle as far as that goes. As far as chaotic, I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm a bit all over the place, you know? Um, I'm into different things. I like different things. I do different things. I sometimes act on spur of the moment. Um, sometimes I will turn down an invitation for potato skins and cocktails. And then sometimes I'll show up and you, you won't expect it. Like, Jay, what are you doing here? You know, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what I mean by chaotic neutral. I don't know if that's really the definition, but that's how I, that's how I define it for myself. What would you say is the personality type of most of the characters you've created? The protagonists? I would say most of them are a little, little chaotic. But they would probably fall a little closer to, to the good side of the Matrix. Um, I think most of my protagonists have good hearts, best intentions for people. I think that most of my characters, most of my protagonists, I think they actually do sacrifice for those that they love, those that they care about. Um, which makes me wonder if I'm projecting a little <laughs> wish fulfillment onto them, just like, ah, you know, this is, this is who I'd like to be uh, in that respect. But uh, yeah, most of my characters are, are pretty, pretty good people. Yeah. And where is this? Where did this make this personality matrix? Where did this come from? I I don't rem I saw it online somewhere, and you know people were filling filling out the quiz to get the uh, the results, and uh, I just thought it was funny. I just thought it was funny. I was like, no, I'm chaotic neutral. I already know where I fall on this spectrum. <laughs> <laughs>